Hi, my name's Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to use the TI-84 to approximate values of definite integrals when the function values are presented in a table. As an example, we're going to use the table values that were presented in question 2 on the 2019 AB calculus exam. In this problem, we're given a particle P that's moving along the x-axis, and we're given a table of five time values and five velocity values. I'm entering a list here of the time values where the time is measured in hours. Now I go to the list menu and under ops, you see this little L here. That's what we need to indicate the name of a list. And now I'll type in the list. Well, let's use time. So I'll type in time. And so now this list will be stored away. And those are, those are our time values. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the five velocity values that correspond to those times. Now these velocities are in meters per hour. And these were presented in a table. And so I'm just entering those five velocities in a list. And again, I'm going to want to store this in a list. So I'll go back to the list menu and under ops again you'll see that little L. And then let's call this, uh, how about VELP for the velocity of particle P. Now once I've stored away these velocity values in the list, we're going to take a look at how you can use the list features on the TI-84 to approximate definite integrals. So for example, let's say I wanted to do a right Riemann sum based on those values. I'm going to need the velocities at the right endpoint of each subinterval. That means I won't use that very first velocity at all. I'll only use these four. And so I'm going to delete that first value and rename this list the velocities that are on the right endpoints. So that's the VELPR. Now let's do that again, except let's use the left endpoints in preparation for doing a left Riemann sum. In this case, I would not use the rightmost value. I'd just be using the left endpoint of each. And I will store that under VELPL for left. And so now I've created a list of the velocities at the left endpoints of each interval. Now we also need the length of each of the subintervals that are determined by the times. So I'm going to go to the list operations and notice you have something called delta list. This is ready made for the operation we want to do with the time. So I'm going to go and retrieve the time list and we'll apply delta list to that. And let's see what the result is. And we will store that in, let's call this new list, uh, how about DELT for delta time. Okay, and now we'll store this away and you'll see the result is going to be the links of each of the subintervals determined by those five. If we think of the five times, as fence posts, we have four subintervals determined by those five times. Okay, now we're ready to actually do some calculations with these lists. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can display them in a table format. So we've gone to the stat editor and I've gone to one of the free columns and I said, okay, let's call that time. And notice it's now put the list of time values that we had stored away, it's shown them in a column format. Let's do the same for our velocities. And now we'll enter those into another column and there's our velocities corresponding to those times. Now let's get our delta t values. We'll put them in another column. And you'll note that it has one less value in it because there's only four subintervals determined by those five time values. And then let's go ahead and get our left endpoint velocities. 
and there's four of those and finally we'll get our right endpoint velocities so we'll go back and retrieve VLPR and then we'll have all the data we need in order to calculate some Riemann sum approximations. For a left Riemann sum, we'll multiply the delta t values times the left endpoint velocities and sum those up. For a right Riemann sum, we'll multiply the delta t values times the right endpoint velocities and add up the results. Now these operations can all be done uh, using list features on the TI-84. So to illustrate that, let's go to the list menu and now we're going to do some math with lists. So I'll go to the math menu and the math menu you'll see sum. Okay, We're going to sum up the product of the delta t list and the left endpoint velocity list. So I've retrieved the delta t list and we're going to multiply by and now we'll retrieve the left velocity list. And then the result of this will be the left Riemann sum. And there it is, 111.1. .1. Let's do this for the right Riemann sum. So I'm just going to echo down this sum again. And I'll, the only edit I need to do is change this to the right endpoint velocity list. And there's our right Riemann sum, 94. Now if I wanted the trapezoidal approximation over that entire time interval 0 to 4, I could just take these two Riemann sum approximations from the left and right and take those results, add them together, divide by 2, and that average is exactly the trapezoidal approximation. There it is, 102.55. Now in the free response question number 2 on the AB exam, it actually asks for a trapezoidal sum using just the first three subintervals. So can we use our data to do that? Well, it's pretty easy. We can just go ahead and edit it. So I'm going to go back to our list editor. And what I'm going to do, since we're only going to use the first three subintervals, I'm going to delete the last entry off of each of these three columns. The velocities from the right, velocities from the left, endpoints, and then the delta T values. So I'm just going through and throwing away basically that last interval because we're not concerned with it. And now I can recalculate using the same operations we did before. Now that's just using those first three subintervals. So there's our left Riemann sum. And here comes our right Riemann sum. And again, if we average these two, that should give us our trapezoidal sum. So I'll take the 45.1 plus the 36.4, divide by 2, and there we go. And that was the trapezoidal sum approximation we're looking for. Keep in mind on the AP exam, you're going to want to show the individual products of the delta t's and the velocity values you're using to get a Riemann sum approximation, and not just the final result. OK, that winds up this video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.